Now that we've got our first data set, the next step is going to be to look at that data set. Whenever we get a new piece of data, whenever we get a new full data set, the first step is always going to be, what did I get? Did I get the correct thing? What's in this data set? So I've opened up my data set here. And in this case, it was a um, CSV file, comma separated variable file. And it's easily opened up in Excel, Google Sheets, or any basic spreadsheet application. So I'll just poke around for a second here. I'll note what the what the uh, very what the column headings are, so I can get a sense of what of what my variables are. Um, look at what the replicates are or the the rows. Okay, gotcha. So now this is some unique identifier number here. Is a little bigger. So this is some unique identifier number in this column. Uh, this is the year in which the disaster occurred. Um, this is, and then we have a series of categorizations of, in this case, the type of disaster that was there. If it was natural, if it was climatological, what have you. And then as we scroll over, we find some uh, geographic information, such as the the country and the region. Uh, we have some units here in terms of what the magnitude of the disaster was and the units for that magnitude, the latitude and longitude if there was a specific location of or epicenter of the event. Um, and then if the event lasted for multiple years, there might be a start and stop, etc. And then over here, we have the total number of deaths, deaths associated with this event. And then... Uh, some monetary damages in these next columns, including the total uh, damage. And I'll notice note here when I click on this, uh, it says this is in um, thousands of dollars. So this is not twenty-five thousand dollars. This is twenty-five thousand thousands, or in other words, twenty-five million dollars in U.S. dollars. Okay, so there we go. So that looks great. Now what I'll also notice here is as I take a look here, we don't have a single, we don't necessarily have a single value for a single country. Um, there could be multiple disasters that hit a single country in a certain year. There could be no disasters that hit a country in a certain year. So what I wanna do first is, is summarize this. What I really wanna have is, again, this is the raw data. What I really wanna do is say, perhaps go to the bottom of the, of the data file here and you know, generate my own table, right? I want, I want to, I want to control the data. I'm gonna tell the data what I want it to look like. It's not gonna tell me what it, what it wants to look like. I'm in control. You're in control. So, uh, for example, here this column B uh, looks to be the year. Um, so I'm gonna just gonna start making some things here. Now this data set goes from 1900 to modern day. Now I could come in here and type all these different numbers in here by hand, and I could do that, um, that might take a while, or I can just use a simple function. Recall that using functions um, begin with me signaling to the program, in this case Excel, signaling to the program that I wanted to do some math. I wanted to do some type of calculation. So I'm gonna type the equal sign here, and then I'm gonna say um, it's gonna equal this cell plus the number one. Hit return. Now, check it out. Now it's pretty cool. If I paste this formula down, this formula is going to keep adding one each time. And I can go ahead and do that all the way till I get to the current year. Now we're up to 2030. That's too far. Let me delete a couple of these. There we go. All right. Now, um, the data for 2021 is only partial. We'll leave it in for completeness, but we probably don't want to analyze that since all these other uh, years include an entire year of 365 days. Um, now, just in case I want to manipulate stuff uh, or, or, or or change things around, I, I don't want there to be some accident here. I notice as I click on these cells, the what is in this cell, in this cell where the um, my my highlight is, where my selection is, it, said, it looks like it says 2020. It doesn't actually say 2020. It actually is this. It's actually the formula. So what I want to do is 
make sure I have just the raw uh, numbers. So I'm going to go up here, select all of these cells, hit copy. If I hit, if I hit paste, it's just going to make the same stuff. So instead, I'm going to do a special thing, which I can either do with um, shortcuts or I can just simply come up here and say edit. Instead of doing paste, I'm going to do paste special. And I'm going to say I want to paste just the values now and say OK. Now what I've done is I've created the, these, these guys. And notice now in 1933, it's not some formula for, uh, that creates 1933. It actually is the number 1933, 1933. OK, cool. So then what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to um, use a sum if function. So I'm going to tell this data set, or I'm going to tell Excel to go to this data set, query a certain number of cells, and if those cells, right, so if if the, anywhere in this row, the data I'm manipulating, if it says 2020, I want you to add that number to the 2020, um, 2020 row. Make sense? So I'll show you what that looks like right here. Now for, for ease, I'm just going to scroll over here so that we are uh, lining up in the same place. Um, this is going to start right here. Let me just go and double check. Okay, so I've come back down here. Okay, so I'm going to say equals sum if, and notice here I have a range criteria and the sum range. So the range is going to be, um, in this case, the date. So I'm going to come over here the range is going to be this guy. I'm going to hold down and get to the top here, the shift key. So I can select this entire row, the shift key, and then click. And now I've selected that whole thing. Then I will hit the comma, and I'm going to say what my criteria is. My criteria is going to be uh, this variable. So the criteria in this row is 1900, so I'm going to click on that. And then the last part is the sum range. So what's the, what's the range I'm going to sum? This is AI for the number of people that passed away. Again, I'm going to click this cell, scroll all the way up to the top, hold the shift key down, click, and now I'm done. So now I can close off this formula by putting a parentheses hit return. Now this says that in 1900 uh, in my region 1,250,170 people died. Okay, Across all the countries and across all the disasters. Uh, now one more thing before I, I, I paste and I'm able to finish. Right here is I, as if I were to paste this down these things are going to be relative. So this range right here is going to be fine. This red is going to be OK. As I go into the next row, red is going to shift down. That's cool. But the blue and the purple, they're also going to shift down. So they're going to start moving downwards, and that's going to be a problem. So what I want to do is I want to lock, tell this variable to tell this formula to lock in. So as I come up here, I'm going to click. I could put I could lock in the letter, or I could lock in the number. So I could lock in the column, or I could lock in the row. So for this, what I'm going to do is um, the columns are cool. I just want to make sure I lock in the row. So I'm going to click right before the number, put a dollar sign, come up here, put a dollar sign. And the same thing in the purple. AI. I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the 8 and a dollar sign right after the AI. Hit return. Again, the same exact number. But now when I copy and paste this down, it's going to be locked into that same range the whole time. I'll copy this, paste down, and there we go. Okay, so here is here is my data for the total number of folks that died, at least the official counts, um, in my region, in this data set, for these various years. Now I can just follow the same procedure to do um, uh, dollars or any of the other variables I wanted to sum. Then I could smoosh these guys together and have a nice table, or I could have this uh, data 
uh, maybe put on a different tab and then import this into my graphing program and it'll be very nice and slick and clean. So simple manipulations. First thing again we do when we get a data set, let's have a look at it, let's explore it, make sure we understand what the variables are, make sure there isn't some weird corruption, uh, make sure everything makes sense, and then um, go ahead and start exploring. And one of the easiest ways is to start to do some type of summary statistics or some summarization of your data. The max, the min, the average, the summation, etc. And, uh, and then you're off to the races. So manipulating data, very easy. First time or two, it might be a little confusing, but once you get the handle of it, you will be the master of the data and you will tell the database what you want it to do.